Welcome to Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet you can find an uncensored version of me. Hi, I'm Rachel, and my big announcement for today is that my new merch line launched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. I'm wearing one. If you're if you're watching this on YouTube right now, it's my favorite one. It's me with the middle finger. There are three different designs but there's a t-shirt and a hoodie version of each. So if you want to go check that out, the link is down below. This is me attempting to market myself. I'm not very good at self-promotion. It's actually a giant flaw. And I would probably be a lot more successful in my business if I learned how to gloat about myself. I can't do it. Every time I go to like small mixers or anything, I, I just don't want to tell people what I do. I don't want to, bra- I just feel like it's bragging. And it comes off as... I don't like how it comes off. It comes off as weird. Like I'm full of myself and I don't like to do that. Abby gets, she always like does that, you know, like when you're in a relationship, the little arm smack thing. They're like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I, it, I, th- things. <laughs> she's actually, and she's like, she's an influencer. She talks about me. And I'm just like, I, it's, it's no big deal. I'm fine. And I do the same with anything I launch ever. I'm like, oh, I did merch. If you maybe want to, Check it out, but don't, you don't need to. I won't put the link anywhere. You don't need to bug yourself with that. I have issues. I suck, but I'm great. So go check out my merch, please. Thank you. All right. That was my big announcement. I wrote that down to talk about it. I'm forcing myself. And then question of the day. Remember, if you ever have a question, please DM me or leave it in the comments down below. Someone asked if I'll have JoJo on another episode. I want to. Girl's just busy. We're supposed to hang out at some point this week. Jojo and I have always gone through phases, and this is why we're able to maintain our friendship, is because neither of us are insulted when we don't see each other. And when Jojo is in between projects and single, I see her a lot. And then when she gets into a new relationship, I don't see her. But once they're stable, then I see her a lot because then we go on double dates. And then if she's in the middle of a project, I don't see her at all. So right now she was very, very consumed with guilty pleasure. And, uh, that was taking up all our time. The music video is now released. The song is out. Uh, it's a bop. Oh, nothing will ever compare to bop, bop, twist it. Check it off your checklist. Chug, chug, kick it, move it, move it, mix it. That was one of my favorite songs of hers. It's a good one. (laughs) Anyway, uh, her release just happened. So now she's like, I'm free for a couple weeks until we start doing something else. So, uh, I will try and snag her soon. I would just like to hang out with her as a friend. And then maybe if we have time, we'll do a podcast. But yeah, thank you. Also, Rachel's Rewind. That was a bad rewind, man. What is wrong with me? There it is. In the last episode, everybody loves Abby. And don't worry, I will relay the message on to her. You are all very fan of her. You are all very fan. You are all very much a fan of her on the episode. I'll let her know. Uh, Maybe boost her ego a little bit so she'll come back on for another one. And then moving on to, this is a quick, there was not much to talk about on the question, the rewind, and now the what pisses me off. Now, if you're new, I read a section of my book, 101 Things That Pissed Me Off. I wrote this like seven years ago. In every episode, we read an entry. This was written seven years ago. So I do not hold all the same opinions, values, and anger that I did back then. This one, I'm going... I'm going to have to say I probably don't agree with anymore, but let's read it. Number 45. You know what pisses me off? That nose picking isn't acceptable. I'm going to have to say I do not agree with this much anymore. I mean, well, let's see what I say about it. I don't remember. This also is me not remembering what I wrote. And this book is just as much of a surprise to me is it, as it is to you. Here it is. And it reads, when someone has a booger hanging out of their nose, it's all anyone is going to notice. They will be stared at. It's embarrassing for them and everyone in the room. But that person probably wouldn't have that booger situation if it was okay to pick our noses in public. I agree, boogers are gross. But I still want to be able to pick my nose whenever I want. It's satisfying. And don't act like you don't enjoy it as well. And let's just put this out in the public space. Picking your nose with a bare finger feels 1000% better than picking with a tissue. Science. 
guys, I, I don't know where I was going with that. I, I mean, <laughs> what? I don't want to see people picking their nose. I really don't. Uh, this was, I think I just want it to be acceptable for me to pick my nose because Lord knows I don't want to see anyone else do it. Don't, don't pick your nose in public. I mean, you can use a tissue. The reason why it's gross is where are you going to put the booger? And then you have to wash your hands afterwards, or you're just going to have booger on your hand. You might get rid of the booger, but the essence will still linger upon your finger. Wash your hands, people. Use a tissue. And I get that sometimes it's not as good. I love how I'm like trying to validate myself while also contradicting myself. I, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel as good, but use a freaking tissue. I will say I love blowing my nose in the shower, but I hate picking my nose in the shower because it gets too goopy. You want a solid booger when you pick it. So you feel like you got it all. This is a disgusting topic. I apologize to everyone for this topic. Little, little me was just going at it. I don't quite know. All right. It's a solo episode today. Don't worry. My mother has agreed and is coming tomorrow. We have set a date to film the next episode. So please leave your questions down below for my mother and uh, tell us what you want us to talk about. But since it's solo, I will be reading and am I the asshole? If several, actually. <laughs> Let's just jump into it, shall we? Am I the asshole for letting my daughter be hungry and not ordering for her at a fast food place? I mean, right off the bat, you know I'm gonna say yes. You're an asshole. But let's dive in a little deeper. My daughter is 15 and has social anxiety. Oh, like she was there and you, uh, you were letting her order food and, you, and she, okay. I mistook the title. I thought you were just not letting her eat food and she was hungry, but you're not physically ordering for her because she has the capabilities. Got it, 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 got it. Still, let's read it. My daughter is 15 and has social anxiety. She is in counseling for it and not meds, not needed. The rule in our household is that if you want fast food when we are out, you pay for it with your own money. We don't have McDonald's money. You aren't going there. I also don't allow eating in the car. So we stop at places to eat. We had to go out and do errands. I told her to grab something to eat beforehand, but she said she wasn't hungry. We go on our errands and halfway through, she wants to stop at Wendy's. I pull in and tell her to go order. I will grab a seat. Okay, so she knew. She has her own money. You told her to eat beforehand. You aren't getting anything. She asked to go to Wendy's, so you brought her there, okay? So far, no issues. She comes back a few minutes later and tell, tells me she can't order. She doesn't want to talk to the cashier at the front of the store. I told her she needs to order and we will head out. She asked me to order and I said no. We sit for about 10 minutes when I tell her it's time to go. She in short is pissed and my wife is also upset I didn't order for her. Then I let her go hungry. I find this stupid. I didn't starve her for days. It was only a four hour outing. Am I the asshole? Edit. For those asking, her counselor has told us she needs to start doing stuff on her own. This was a low risk. She literally gave the example of ordering food without our help. Okay, so the therapist says that she needs to do this on her own. I also ran through a script with her at the table, but she wouldn't do it. Um, I'm not her therapist. I think this was like a tough love situation for sure. This is a, this is a sticky thing because you're running into tough love versus enabling. Like at, at what point do you do it? Do what point do you don't? It, this is a very difficult thing to do. If her therapist said that she needs to order her own food, yeah. And also she has food at home. You told her to eat beforehand. You're not the asshole for this. I think it was more of a, a tough love thing, but I don't know her. I don't know her actual diagnosis. I don't know how far she's come, how far she needs to go and stuff. I will say I got very annoyed. My ex used to have me order for him. And it annoyed the shit out of me because when I wasn't around, he ordered for himself. He was leaning on me and I enabled it a lot, but it was embarrassing. He'd whisper his order to me in front of the cashier and then I would have to say it out loud when the bro was able to do it himself. Okay, not the asshole, uh, the top comma, not the asshole. You were on the right side of helping versus enabling and helping versus doing it for her. In the 10 minutes you sat there, did you do anything to try to help her? Not order her food, but try rehearsing. Yeah, he said he did that. Okay. Um, so then they said, you could, if you want, 
go up and stand next to her as she's ordering so she doesn't feel as scared. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. Then someone said, my 16-year-old has extreme anxiety in these situations as well. The first few times she started to order, I jumped in when she froze up. Then she graduated to placing the order with me standing right behind her and not saying anything. Now she can order by herself, but there's, but there's times when she freezes up. Yeah, everyone's saying like, not the asshole. This was just like a learning situation. And they're saying like, maybe next time go stand next to her so she feels supported, but not ordering for her. I think that's great. And a lot of people are saying, hey, I have anxiety. I'm also autistic. I have trouble ordering food. You being next to her would help a lot. That's cool. And people are saying that's like a valid method. It sounds like maybe I, I shouldn't diagnose, but I have a hard time giving my opinion on this kind of stuff because you're dealing with like actual therapists, counselors, psychology, mental disorders. But it sounds like maybe your wife is a little more, more on the enabling side of it, which is hard. Moms talk about that a lot. They just, they want to help their kids. They want to love them. They want to, them to feel supported all the time. So it's really hard to, to tough love it. I'm trying to scan past the comments that are like, this generation's anxiety and blah, 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 blah. This one said, according to the edit and the comments you left, your daughter needs to start doing minimal effort activities to help her with her social anxiety. This was an example of one such activity. In addition, you tried to prep your child beforehand by reminding her to eat and she did not. Part of raising kids in a healthy manner is teaching them the consequences of their actions in addition to preparing them for the real world. Her anxiety is manageable but she needs to learn to manage on her own. You cannot hold her hand through life and she will not be a functioning adult unless she learns how. That process is going to be hard. There is no two ways around it. So it would stand to reason that the first few times she attempts to do something different than the norm, she might fail and everyone is going to be upset at the outcome. To me, this seems like a step forward. Change is frustrating because it's not an overnight thing. It's more akin to moving the needle. Change isn't harming or hurting. It is a stretch. You offered her options, offered to role play, and she shut it down. She was allowed to ask for your help. You're allowed to say no. You're allowed to offer help, and she's allowed to say no. That's all that happened here. You and your wife need to get on board together, though, to figure out how to handle when your daughter pushes back support she doesn't want. Work with a therapist to find tangible solutions. I see a parent who handled this reasonably. Yeah, everyone's saying not the asshole. And people with anxiety who fear ordering are like, no, you did what's right. So, all right, there we go. That one's set. All right, this next one I think runs into my realm of the world. Am I the asshole for telling my friend to take down her viral video because people are fat shaming me? Now, I will state as an influencer who makes my money on the internet, my money on my videos, if I post something that someone, like someone's in it and they do not like it, and they ask me to take it down, I take it down. I have friends that have said, please don't film me drinking. Please don't film me drunk. Please don't film me in an ill manner. Please don't film me. Please don't let people know who I am. Like the, I, everyone, and everyone is entitled to their setting their boundaries. My job is weird. And I have posted things and my friends are like, oh, and I was like, wait, did I can take that down? They're like, no, no, it's fine. Just like, if I feel they're iffy or if I feel someone's iffy on something, I either take it down or I edit it out, or I just don't post anything like that again. My friend's feelings are more important to me than my views and my money. And a lot of the time now I've learned to ask before I start filming and to ask before I post. Joy is slightly an exception. The girl, if it's funny, kind of lets me do whatever I want. And I appreciate the shit out of her for that. She has mentioned once I did her dirty in a thumbnail. So I I try really hard not to do her dirty in thumbnails anymore. But uh, a lot of my friends, I try very hard not to post. It sucks. But I try not to post them in a manner that like if it went public, wouldn't distress their jobs, wouldn't make people question them as humans. We're a, I hate this word. We're a silly group and we do dumb things. We definitely let loose with each other. All of them are great people, but I wish I could post things. I so wish I could post so many of the funny things, our karaoke nights, our dance battles, stuff like that. But my friends, you know, I, I always want to put them in the most professional light because we're all adults. I think that's the word. They always need to look professional. They always are great people and they're always hilarious people, but I need to always make sure I post them professionally. So I, I'm getting on a tangent here, but uh, yeah, you're never an asshole for saying like, hey, please take down that video of me. It's annoying but you're not an asshole. But let's read this, all right? 
My friend, a 17 year old female makes TikToks regularly and she had a decent following for of a few thousand. Cool. She wanted to grow it for a while. And sometimes she would complain to me when I, it wasn't having any growth. And I, a 17 year old female would try and help her get a viral video. She's greedy for views. That is a dangerous game to play. Oh, she's greedy for views. Guys, if I, if I didn't have a soul, the amount of views and followers I could get, but I, I just can't do it. I had to, I had to choose between being a good person and views. It's hard. Obviously there are great people out there that have lots and lots of views. I'm not saying you have to be a shitty person. That's the only way you're going to get views. I'm just saying being a shitty person is a quick way to get views. It's a dangerous game. It's a very, very dangerous game. Well, it happened, and over the past few days, she had quite a lot of likes. I'm deliberately trying to be vague with describing this, as this points out my insecurities, and I don't want someone to find out and add to that. That is true. The second someone knows what you're insecure about, they double down on it. We recorded a video of us both dancing to a popular song right now, and it got her a lot of followers and likes. She's really happy. But a part of why it seemed to go viral is because people are fat shaming me in the replies. Ooh, God, sometimes the internet is evil and it makes me so angry. I am quite overweight. I'm 250 pounds and quite insecure of my body, which is why I don't want to be in my friend's videos to begin with. But she convinced me. I don't think it would go viral, so I was wearing a crop top and shorts, and now people are calling me an it or a thing. I'm so sorry, baby girl. And saying rude things like telling me to cover up and then it's a violation to their eyes. That ended up on the wrong side of TikTok. I am so sorry. It shouldn't even offend me because I know they're all 13-year-olds, but those comments have hundreds of likes and that's embarrassing. Hey, I, I get it. There could be a hundred positive comments, but that one negative one is going to sting and just fester in your brain. I completely understand. I only noticed this morning when my friend told me her video went viral and I told her to take it down because people are being rude to me and I showed her some of the comments. She told me to stop being selfish. Oh, well, that's calling the kettle black. And that I willingly chose to appear in the video and that it'll ruin her getting popularity now. Hey, if she can't get popularity elsewhere, she's not going to get popular ever. One viral video, unless you know how to profit off that and build off that, you're not doing anything with that. I told her that I didn't think it would go viral. And she says that she understands that it's not fair of them to make fun of my body, but the video already has downloads and you can't wipe anything from the internet. So it's useless to delete it. Okay, fuck that now. And that I need to get it together and I need to get tougher skin. Am I the asshole? I know you can't delete anything, but I didn't really expect to see hundreds of likes calling me a whale or anything. Your friend should delete it. I understand as someone who posts that that would be really annoying that someone willingly filmed this video and then it's doing really well and they asked me to take it down. Like I get that. It's annoying, but it's what you do. And you don't, you don't give the person shit for asking. You say, of course, I am so sorry. And you just take it down. And then from then on, you just don't do the videos with each other anymore. That's life. I'm so sorry. That's shit. Okay. Top comment. She told me to stop being selfish. Someone commented on that and said, she is pri- prioritizing pretend internet points over your concerns and well being. Yes, you consented to being in the video, but you can withdraw your consent at any time too. She doesn't care and wants those sweet, sweet favorites. Wow. This person is not your friend. You are not the asshole. Report the video to TikTok for bullying and they will remove it and give her account a strike. Then I'd block her and move on. That's a little, a little extreme to all of those ends, but that's fine. I agree that you're not the asshole by any means. OP says, I will report the video, but I'm not really sure what it does because it's just us dancing. So it doesn't really look like bullying or anything. (laughs) Ha ha. I've reported some comments too, but I haven't gotten an update on them yet. Thank you. And thank you for your words too. Yeah. Everyone here, not the asshole, a bit naive but not the asshole. Your quote unquote friend is the asshole here. She's disregarding your feelings and experiences with this all for the sake of some fake fame that will never really come of anything. Kudos for standing up and trying to help her understand your side of things. This seems like an emotional trip and I'm sorry you're having to deal with that, especially from someone you thought you could trust. You tried to be on her side with this and you put yourself out there in the first place, and she should feel ashamed for not considering how this affects you. Also, I would like to say that I'm sorry you're having a difficult time with body image. They go on to say nice things. Yeah, definitely not the asshole. Someone said, unfortunately, you can't make your friend remove the video, but you have learned some valuable things from this. 
This person is not your friend and never be afraid to stand up for yourself or feel like you need to fold to peer pressure. I'm sorry you're in the situation. If it's any consolation, it will probably pass quickly and you're not the asshole. Yeah, I'm really sorry. And also your friend is a fucking idiot. She's like, you can't scrub things from the internet. If I delete a video, it's a lot less likely that people are going to see the video again if I delete it. And also I would be then supporting my friend and I'm not giving them people as much of a platform to hate on her. Your friend's a, your your friend is shit. They're just going to get worse. If they're that fame hungry, they're just going to get worse. I have seen it a million times. Okay. This one's short. And it's a, would I be the asshole? If I tell my aunt that she needs to replace my baking tools, she threw away. Uh, I would say yes. She just threw out your shit, but let's see what actually happened. Okay. So some context for this. Okay. Some context for this. I love to bake. And last year I spent a pretty penny buying a set of baking utensils that I love. Good for you. You treat yourself. My aunt asked if she could borrow them last week and I said, okay, but I would need them back by today because I planned on baking my friend's baby shower cake. So sweet of you. I went to her house this morning to get them only to find she threw away several of my utensils because they quote unquote broke. To be clear, the head on some of my utensils pop off to be washed in the dishwasher since the handles were wooden. You're fucking kidding me. So she thought they were broken or broke them and threw them out and then didn't replace them? Okay. She thought they broke because of this. And instead of calling me to tell me she was going to throw them away, she just did it. I'm going to go buy new ones today so I can bake the cake, but I want her to buy me the same brands of the ones she threw away. Not the whole set, just the brush and the spatula. It would only cost her like 20 to $30 at the most. So would I be the asshole, asshole if I tell her she needs to buy me new ones? Not at all. They weren't one. They weren't hers to decide what happens to them. And two, they weren't broken. She was just dumb. (laughs) Uh, Not the asshole. Your aunt threw away things she borrowed without consulting you and didn't offer to replace them. Oh, heck no. She needs to pony up and pay for the damage she did. Anything with a wooden handle should be hand washed anyway. Stop putting them in the dishwasher. Oh my God. She either broke your stuff and owes you money or threw away your unbroken stuff and owes you money. Either way, no peace until she ponies up. I don't even cook and that sounds like a good product to have. (laughs) Oh man, you shouldn't lend her things again, regardless if she pays you back or not. God, not the asshole. She threw them away. It's her responsibility to replace them. Not the asshole. That is so silly. Did she not think it amazing how cleanly each spatula quote unquote broke? Not the asshole, but if she refuses, just think of that 20 to $30 as a cost of never having to loan her anything again. Yeah, these are all uh, not the asshole. I definitely agree. Who the fuck breaks something and then doesn't either offer to replace this or let the person know? What the hell? Especially if you're like, hey, I'm coming over because I have to bake a cake. Do you think she wouldn't mention it in that moment? I am so confused by that. All right, let's do one more and then we'll... Change the battery on my camera. Am I the asshole for wearing my friend's merch in front of my boyfriend's friend? Guys, I, th- I think that is a very odd question and we're gonna need some more detail. <laughs> All to count because I have siblings on my main and I don't want this in the family group chat yet. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh my God. I think I'm the only person in my family that knows how to use Reddit. So that's weird. Last weekend, my boyfriend and I went out for an outdoor excursion with his friends. It was very casual and we were all in athleisure. Does that mean athletic clothes? Athleisure? Okay. I brought my favorite hoodie, which happens to be from my friend's company. It has the company name on the breast and the logo on the back. Just like one of those random merch thingies they give out at charity days, etc. But I love it because it's perfectly oversized and soft on the inside. I love a favorite hoodie. There, the, my... Everyone's favorite hoodie is always like the most random thing ever, but it just fits right and feels good. I love it. All right. So you wore your favorite hoodie. Got it. One of my boyfriend's friends noticed and asked if I worked there and I explained how I got it. This triggered a lot of questions from the group because they Googled the company after I mentioned it. My boyfriend said on our way home that it was inappropriate for me to be wearing clothing with another guy's name on it around his friends. What? The company's name is literally my friend's last name. It's not like a football jersey or something. 
and that I embarrassed him, immediately leave. Immediately dump him. I'm, no. Oh my God. What? I'm going to summarize this in my, in my, okay. You wore a hoodie of a company. That company's name is the last name of someone. So let's say it's like Jefferson. All right. This is your friend's like dad's company. All right. So it's called Jefferson. We are making up the name. All right. So Jefferson's electric company, you're wearing this hoodie and your boyfriend is mad because it's someone else's last name on your merch hoodie. You're lying. You're absolutely lying. If Abby walked in wearing a shirt with like the Zara's last name on it, there's, there's not a, I guess that we're both friends with her. One of her friends back from back East, what, what if their last names was on a hoodie? There isn't a single part of me that would be upset. What the fuck? Maybe if it was like her ex-girlfriend's full name, I'd be like, that's weird. But like a friend's company's last name, you're, di- you're lying. How insecure do you have to be to be upset about that? I'm trying, I'm going to read more. There's more. I'm trying to wrap my head around it because I can't understand what the big deal is. Everyone I've asked is on my side and says he's massively, he's massively, but they're my friend. Okay. They didn't write that right. He's massively overreacting, but they're my friends. One of my friends did say that while my boyfriend is being petty, I did make him look small. You can't make someone look small. You can't. I mean, you didn't say my boyfriend sucks, so I'm not wearing a hoodie with his last name on it. What? And while my boyfriend shouldn't have said anything, it makes sense that he feels a bit awkward is if this is an ex-boyfriend maybe i'd be like okay like maybe things are in well whatever your friend's company i'm so confused by that this is the first instance my of my boyfriend overreacting to something like this so i'm trying to understand if this is a misstep by me and i'm just not noticing because this hasn't been like him up until this point yeah shocking the first comment is not the asshole because what i'm so fucking confused not the asshole and your boyfriend needs to get over it just because you wear merch from a company that has a guy's last name on it does not mean you're going to shag said guy it's merch for christ's sake it's not like this friend gave you jewelry or something it's something he had for sale and you purchased like what with money like how capitalism works and shit Him getting upset by this is like you getting upset over the fact that he bought a car off a female friend of his and wants to drive it around and stuff. Yeah, everyone's saying not the asshole. Uh, I've been schlepping Tom Hilfiger, Calvin Klein, Hugo Boss, and Mr. Haynes for years. Right? Carhartt, Tommy Hilfiger, Ralph Lauren. (laughs) Are these triggering to him as well? (laughs) Not the asshole. Your boyfriend is acting like an insecure, overly possessive asshole. Is he in general? Because that's the vibe I'm getting. OP says he hasn't been in our nearly year long relationship. That's why I'm so confused. And then they said, because he didn't think about it until his friends decided to be detectives and investigate the brand. They are part of the problem too. Their attention to the situation made him feel self-conscious and insecure. Someone says, I've never looked into the business branding on someone's clothes and decided to investigate if they've worked there and why they're wearing it. The OP says, uh, they didn't ask why I was wearing it. One of the friends asked if I worked there. So I said, no, it's my friend's company. Then he asked what company the company does. And I told him another friend Googled it because it's kind of niche. Then once they saw the search results, they had more questions about him slash his work. It wasn't focused on me or even invasive questions. They were just curious. Yeah, this is insane. I... All of my friends wear my merch. I'm literally getting my friends merch with my face on it. And some of them are guys with girlfriends. I'm friends with all the girlfriends. I'm actually only friends with guys because they're dating the girls. But like, (laughs) I don't know. This just seems weird to me. It's it is extremely possessive and insecure. I don't understand. I guess I'm not that insecure and jealous. I don't know. Moving on. That one is insane. If you think he had any right to be upset about that, you're wrong. I did think it was his parents' company, but it's not. It was his company. Who cares? I would love to wear my friend's company's merch. If my friends run their own business, give me the fucking merch. Give it to me. Give it to Abby. Give it to everyone. I support my friend's businesses. 
as long as it's not like illegal drug stuff. I'm not friends with anyone that does that, but like, z- <laughs> never mind. Never mind. I just don't get it. Okay. We're moving on. Am I the asshole for taking back my offer to help my son with housing? Probably, <laughs> but let's see. My son and his family are struggling. It's hard out there, I know. He came to see if I could help him with rent for a few months. I said that I would, and I did. I gave him $2,000. That was two thirds of his rent for two months. It was a gift. I didn't expect it back. I thought about my grandparents growing up in that little apartment, and I started looking around without talking to him first. Oh, not my grandparents, my granddaughter. (laughs) I just read that. I was like, why are you thinking about your grandparents? Let me reread it. I thought about my granddaughter growing up in that little apartment, and I started looking around without talking to him first. That was 100% my own fault. I found a townhouse for a reasonable price. If I put down a huge down payment, then I could let my son and his family move in there, and it would only cost $850 a month for the mortgage and property taxes. Damn, where do you live? That's cheap. It was close to my granddaughter's school and only five blocks from their current apartment. I took my son and daughter-in-law to see it and told them about my idea. They could live there and get a much better home for their family for just a little over half their current. Okay, so it would be cheaper for them. This makes sense. Okie dokie. And you own it and it's an investment for you. Great. That would give them an opportunity to save up, pay down, pay down bills, whatever, you know? They said it was a very generous gift. I corrected them. I say I was buying the house by taking money from my retirement account and I would need it back. They got really mad that they would be paying the mortgage and not getting equity in the property. Now you're like, you're becoming a landlord and they're renting it from you, right? I mean, that's how I read it. They thought you were just giving them a townhouse. I mean, so I get parents do that sometimes. So that's such a big reach, but I don't think they should be mad at you. Their, their rent is, this is, this is what, that's what renting is. You are basically paying the landlord's mortgage. And then some, that's just how it goes. Okay. They're mad that you're not giving them the townhouse. They're mad that you, you're going to buy a place that would make their rent cheaper. That's, that's fucked up. It has devolved into a big fight. I no longer wish to participate. So I told the agent to let it go. My agent called me because my son asked her to take him to see it again. And she was confused because I had said I was no longer interested. Now my son is upset, upset with me for taking away a house with a yard from his daughter. It seems like no matter what I do, I've done something wrong. Am I the asshole? I think there was a big miscommunication, but I don't think your son has any right to be mad. He's upset that you didn't just give him the townhouse, which is dumb. Like I, I get like, he could be like, oh, I thought this was a gift. Oh, okay. And like, he could be sad on his own, but he should still be like that. Thank you so much. Like, yeah, this will cut our rent in half. And that's amazing. We'll have a bigger space. And then when they're ready, they can go buy a place of their own and you own a townhouse so you can keep renting out or sell it and make money, right? I'm saying not the asshole on this. And if they're being little buttheads, you have every right to pull your offer. Maybe you should have talked to them before pulling out completely and being like, hey, this seems like it's a big kerfuffle. I'm sorry, but I just don't think it's smart. I thought this would be easy and it's not. Let's, let's read what the comments have to say. Top one, not the asshole entirely. And it is literally consequences of their own actions and being greedy and entitled. You were, you were willing to risk your retirement plan for them and they didn't appreciate it or even realize what, was actually, what it actually means. Anything happening with the econ- economy would lower the value of the property and you're literally losing money. Not only that, in order for you to get that money back, you would need to sell the house. Your son and his wife's reaction is incredibly immature. They don't seem to understand how this works at all. How old are they? The OP says my son is 30 and, my wife, and his wife is 28. Someone then commented, said, said my auntie did the exact same thing for both my cousins. They both paid below market rent for six years. One saved enough for a house deposit and the other complained bitterly and procrastinated for a year after she was advised my aunt needed to sell ready for her retirement. Due to the market st- stagnation, my aunt lost money on both houses when selling. Oh. Taking into account fees, etc., the daughter and son-in-law who complained are still very bitter about her not gifting them the house, even though they were saving hundreds a month in rent for over seven years. If your son already complaining now, I'm sure it would have gotten into a huge fight in long term. No good deed goes unpunished. Oh my God. People are so fucking greedy and rude and ungrateful. No one owes anyone shit. I've learned that. 
when your parents pass, they don't have to leave you anything. When someone has money doesn't mean they need to give it to you. There is, oh man, that makes me so angry. I think you need to sit down with your son and wife and have them look at some financial numbers with you about how much a mortgage costs, how much the house costs, and how much the interest will eat your retirement over time if the property value collapses with, say, 15 to 25% as it has in times of economic turmoil. It doesn't sound like they had serious thought on this because they had never been in a situation where this was a close to a financial possibility. So they haven't really investigated or thought it over. Still not the asshole from withdrawing the offer. You are not going to give them your retirement as a gift. Everyone's saying not the asshole. Yeah, they were like, you tried, whatever. I'm sure like your communication skills probably needed to be a little bit better. That's just maybe something as a human you could work on. But in this situation, just like not the asshole. Ugh. All right, let's do one more before I'm bored with myself. This one intrigues me. Am I the asshole for refusing to go on holiday with my ex-husband and saying no to remarrying him? I mean, um, no, you're allowed to turn down marriage proposals in my personal opinion, but let's go into this. I, a 37-year-old female, need some perspective on a situation with my ex-husband, who I'll call a John. He's a 40-year-old male. We were married for a good number of years and have two kids, now close to being teenagers. Up until our last year of marriage, things were going great. I had a successful business that kept me busy, and it seemed like we were in a strong team. But then things changed dramatically. John started to crumble under the pressure and ended up having an emotional affair. To make matters worse, he proposed that we open up our marriage as a solution to his issues. Drop him. Nope. This was completely out of the blue for me, and despite trying to make things work for the sake of our kids, we eventually divorced years ago. Interestingly, even after our divorce, he never practiced this new polygamous identity he claimed to have adopted. It's because it's hard to find someone to go along with it. After three years apart, John and I reconnected. He seemed more mature, and I can admit that I still have feelings for him, but my walls are definitely up. We've been seeing each other for about seven to eight months, but we haven't told the kids yet. Our plan was to spend time together as a family this summer and see if things go well. If not, we'd just fade out quietly. Here's where the problem starts. John initially booked a cruise for him and the kids, but then added a ticket for me as well. The cruise is during a week that I have an important commitment at work. I work for myself and can be flexible, but there are crucial times that I need to be fully available. Additionally, I was really looking forward to having a long weekend off to spend some time with myself and rest. When I told him I couldn't go, he got upset and accused me of never having time for him, which brought up old wounds. This led to a heated discussion where he suggested we just move back in together or even remarry, to which I responded with a firm, hell no. Now he feels like I'm playing him, but that's not my intention at all. I want to reconcile and see if we can build something new, but I'm very clear that I never wanted to get married again. Am I the asshole for refusing to go on holiday, being adamant about not wanting to remarry? I'm just trying to protect myself and my kids while seeing if there's a future for us. I'd say not the asshole at all. Are you kidding me? What the fuck? This man used and abused you emotionally. He made you go through it. And so you have every right to protect yourself. Also, him just buying you a ticket without discussing it fully with you, not the case. Not allowed. Get it out. No, thank you. Let's read the comments. Number one, not the asshole. Shocking. It's completely understandable that you are weary about remarrying. You were cheated on after all. As long as your intentions are clear to your ex, it should be fine. He is being unreasonable asking you to drop everyone for him. And then the OP responded said, since, told him since day one that unfortunately I'm not looking to remarry. Be together and move in? Yes. After at least two years. And the kids agree and are happy about it. I understand that he feels maybe I am slow on purpose, but I am not. Love the guy, but I am more cold and pragmatic now. He made you that way. He can't get mad at the consequences to his own actions. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, another one. Not the asshole. Sounds like he just wants to go back to what he had, not put in the work to rebuild something new. You can never go back to what you had. Sounds like you two need to have a conversation to see what he is open to rebuilding with the understanding you just can't go back. Yep. Yep. Hope he's very responsive. Everyone's saying not the asshole. And someone's like, he doesn't actually seem more mature that you think. Like, there's like, nonsense. He's more mature. Nope. Sounds like he just knows how to play you. All right. 
that's going to be it for today. Thank you guys for listening. I hope that entertained you in your uh, 45 minutes of life that we had here together. Reminder about my merch. I'm doing good. I'm reminding everyone. I'm marketing myself. (laughs) I'm trying. I love you guys. Check it out. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. There's going to be new stuff soon. I have some ideas. But you're all beautiful people. Next week's my mom. Please leave a a question and ideas for what you want to see from us down below or in my Instagram DMs. You're wonderful, beautiful people. And I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet where you can find the uncensored version of me, Rachel Ballinger. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, or follow, or do whatever this platform tells you to do so that you can get notified every time I post a new episode. Love ya!